Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly episode 31. Models and Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. And stay tuned all the way till the end to see a montage of painted minis courtesy of the EOB Complete community. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week, and I end every episode with a story. Now you might think to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week and you stream every single night. How woo woo? Could you possibly have more to say? What well, I do. And here goes. This week I did a little bit of work on some Malifaux minis. I got a new box and I put together these ice dancers. Now these models are kind of neat. Uh, they break they break my Malifaux thing a little bit because I have all of my performers, my Malifaux Arcanist performers, on wooden bases, and so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to build wooden bases and then cover up 99% of it with this big slab slab of ice that they're dancing on. But it'll it'll be worth it. And when I was building these, I had a lot of thinking about difficult to build models. I built a couple of models, a few in my day, and mostly Games Workshop. And I've found that, at least with Games Workshop, models are never hard to build. They're always basically perfect. The only thing wrong with Games Workshop models sometimes is uh, fiddliness, repetitive actions, um, and uh, sometimes they don't put the sprue connection points in the nicest spots, like Space Marines. Often they'll put the sprue connection point on the ball of the backpack and then it's like, ah, uh, on literally 100 Space Marines, I've had to clip it far away and then take a hobby knife and slowly whittle it down until I have a perfect sphere. And whenever I look on eBay and stuff or look at just other people's armies, often you'll see the nice round ball and then one flat spot where they just clipped it because why bother? But the Malifaux models are kind of different. They're in a different scale than Games Workshop models. So they're actually similar in size, but the details are very different. Like uh, Games Workshop would never make a hand that small because it's very, very fragile. Um, but uh, it looks really, really nice. But these models, Malifaux models are hard. I've built kind of a, quite a bit of them at this point and they take they take a little bit more finesse. I wonder if Malifaux maybe isn't a perfect starter or a starter game because hard to build. I mean, all th all both legs and both arms were separate pieces that had to be delicately glued on with the exact right type of glue. These were really, really good. I built some Malifaux kits in the past that were a little bit more finicky and I had to whittle things down to get them to peg perfectly in place. This one, these weren't that bad. These were pretty much perfect, although I did have to use Get Filler on their ice stands. And uh, I did have to use my Tamiya Extra Thick uh, glue in a few places to get a really, really good connection. But I think the one thing that uh, that Malfo style has going for it is the models really are lovely. And whenever I'm working on games, when I'm working on a Games Workshop model, it feels like I'm working on a Games Workshop model. They build the same, they paint the same, Malifaux models feel very, very different, especially later on in a painting career, like like where I'm at, where I have done a lot of stuff and I've tried out a lot of things. Malifaux is really, really cool because I really get to stretch my painting muscles and try things out that I would not ordinarily get to. Uh, I'm really excited to try out some ice themed things with these gals. I actually have some ice on the way. I've heard crushed glass is the best of the best when it comes to scale ice. So I'm gonna be giving that a try, but it should be really neat. And the reason that I worked on Malifaux this week is because I played a game of Malifaux. <gasps> and it was really fun. Malifaux is a really interesting game. Because uh, uh, you you're instead of instead of really building an army, you're building a team, but it's not like building a kill team. You're building a bunch of unique individuals. What makes Malifaux really cool is this feels like more of a role-playing game than uh, any of the Games Workshop games because in Games Workshop you're kind of in control of exactly what your guys are. Like my guys are Space Marines, they are of the Lamenters, 21st founding, and they're yellow because I like yellow. But with these you kind of get what you get. You get Carlos Vasquez, you get Angelica Durand, you get the Ice Dancers. And, uh, and the models look lovely and the characters are really, really cool and they play that way on the tabletop. And so you really kind of are experiencing, well, what is it like when a Korofi attacks a piglet from the bayou? It's really kind of interesting. 
But really, I mean, Malifaux's claim to fame is it uses cards instead of dice. I've, I've read the rules a bunch of times, and whenever I got to the combat mechanics, my eyes would glaze over. It's, it's, it reads incredibly complicated, but it's really not. Here, let me show you. In Malifaux, you have cards, and these cards are all of your characters, and they can all do different things. They can do two actions a turn, and you can pick from the back of your card what attacks you're going to do. And it tells you that this showgirl with her sharpened hairpin has an attack of five. So when you are ready and you're within an inch of an enemy and you want to attack them, you get out your deck. I don't have a, a cool Malifo deck yet, but I do have a deck of cards. And then you flip. Boom, three. You add that three to your five, and then your opponent has also drawn a card and they compare their card to their defensive stats. And if their defensive stat beats your uh, draw of attack, then they win. But in Malifaux, there's a cheating phase, which is awesome. In Malifaux, everybody starts out every turn with a hand of four cards. And those four, four cards can be swapped out whenever you want to cheat. So I rolled, I pulled a three, and that's not very good. If I want to attack my opponent, a three is probably not going to get the job done. So I can cheat and put down a nine. All of a sudden, I'm winning the combat. And if my, my opponent also gets the opportunity to cheat, so maybe he's like, I really don't want this attack to go through, and I have a card in my hand that'll beat that draw, and so they play their cheat, and then the, the, the attack whiffs, or the attack is lessened, but... If the attack goes through, you do one final flip to see the damage. And then the damage characteristic is applied. You look back at your weapon profile and it'll tell you if it is a, a, normal, a normal hit, a medium hit, or a heavy hit. And then you apply that damage to your opponents. It is a super, super cool mechanic. It's interesting that it's not dice based. The cheating mechanic is super, super fun. And after a few hours of flipping cards, that's all I wanted to do. It was so much fun. Just like, ah, oh, yeah, let's see what let's see what I get. It's just neat. You have you have uh, a one through thirteen instead of one through six. Weapons feel like they do a little bit more damage. And uh, in Malifaux, there's a lot of I think more interesting effects, especially since the game has a lot fewer things. In Games Workshop games, Space Marines, there's like 200 different units, and they all sort of do the exact same thing. They're all different shades of guy with a gun. But in Malifaux, the units are a little bit more intricate. Like these Ice Dancers that I was working on, they have a rule called Ice Path, where they can generate a ice pillar. So all of a sudden, you just put down a new thing to the game, and then they can push it around and cause damage or block line of sight or block attacks. Super cool, it's a really, really neat thing. And another model that I love, which I'm super lucky, I picked I picked these models on a complete whim. I just thought they looked cool, but uh, it turns out I really like the play style, which is super lucky. But Korofi, which are the spikier version of a mannequin, Korofi are my big scary damage dealer unit, but every time a Korofi dies, it's replaced with a mannequin. How cool is that? So my opponent has to kill a Korofi, and then they have to kill a mannequin, and then my model is dead. And they don't even leave a corpse. Yes, corpses are an important thing in Malifaux. Uh, my Ice Dancers can actually eat corpses to get more health back, which is awesome. Malifaux is a super, super duper fun game. It is very interesting, and I really enjoyed playing it, and I hope I get to play a lot more of it. I'm definitely going to be putting together more Malifaux teams, I'm still finishing off my performers, but I've been thinking about what what armies I would get into next, or which which teams, batches, gangs would I be interested in, and probably something in a Neverborn flavor. The world of Malifaux is kind of interesting. It's a it's a it's humans from the real world living in an alternate world. It's a lot like Stranger Things, the Upside Down. Everybody is living in the Upside Down, and the Neverborn are the natural inhabitants of the Upside Down. They are the demigorgons of the Malifaux world, and they're very cool, and they're very creepy. I think uh, Malifaux, I love 40k, um, but it's sometimes fun to go into a whole nother world. And I think that's why some games like Infinity aren't as attractive to me. I'm sure they're great games, and the models are really cool, but it's another flavor of sci-fi skirmish, 
And I don't know if I love the Infinity World enough to really dive into it. But Malifaux is so incredibly different from 40k that uh, it doesn't, they don't clash at all. I feel like they just add to each other. The Mal Malifaux is cool, kind of steampunky, Victorian, gothic, noir. And uh, Games Workshop is high fantasy, grim, dark sci-fi. It's pretty cool. But uh, Malifaux is super neat. And it's fun to play with cards. Dice are nice and shiny, and they, they offer a nice tactile feel to games. But uh, a deck of cards is really cool, too. I was playing against the Bayou faction, which is Malifaux's version of orcs, I guess. They're gremlins, not orcs. And they had this unit called the Sow, which was a three-headed pig. And its special rule was every turn, it could spend its action points and give itself one damage to try to birth a new pig. <laughs> And the, if you birthed the pig, it just was on the board in an available unit to play with, and it was hilarious. And then when I finally killed a sow, upon death it also births another pig. Super gross, but also like super cool. I feel like, um, if, if going back to a Games Workshop game, I feel like Nurgle, what they've done with Nurgle is a really, really good way of making something that's gross and disgusting and upsetting really cool. Like, Plague Marines are cooler in their disgustingness. They're not off-putting or gross. Like, I mean, they are off-putting and gross, but in a fun way. Where it's, there's, I don't know, I doubt there's very many people out there who are like, I don't, I don't want Nurgle. They're weird. I don't like that. I bet most people are like, yeah, that's kind of neat. They're tentacly and a little slimy and they got all of these spikes and horns. And I feel like Malifaux is the same way. Like, the subject matter is kind of gross and weird but they have such a style to it that it actually is like kind of really inviting and engaging. When I'm scrolling through the Malifaux pages, I don't see any models where I'm like, eh, whatever. Like every model is like, that's pretty cool. And I would like, I would like that model. It is really cool. It looks like it'd be fun to paint. I bet it has really, really fun rules. I bet it's really interesting lore and world. The whole Malifaux range is gorgeous. And the models, are very nice if you can get them put together. But I played Malifaux and it was super duper fun. I hope I get to try out, I will try my best to try out as many games as I possibly can because I wanna learn more about what's out there, I wanna learn more about game mechanics and I wanna be able to bring all of this knowledge into the channel. And if you would like to see that, the best way to support us and the videos that we make is by becoming a member of our Patreon. Over there, you're gonna get access to some behind the scenes, voting on what models I paint live here on YouTube, a live hobby hangout every week, and some terrain STLs. <gasps> yeah. And you'll be supporting us in making more videos and making them better and better all the time. Who knows, maybe a few of them will be about Malifaux. But also this week, I was on the Warhammer community and I saw their rumor engine post. And usually I ignore these. They're pretty fun. I like that Games Workshop does these where they show off like a, a two close up of a model that's coming out pretty soon. And usually I'm, I like it. I think it's cute. I think it's a fun thing to do, but usually it's so vague that I'm like, it could be anything. So why bother? But uh, this week, it's just a chaos hand. It's a chaos space marine claw. And so there's there's gonna be some chaos space marine stuff coming out, which is super cool. It's a weird, it looks a lot like a uh, hellbrute hand that has been stretched dramatically with long, scary fingers and a flamethrower right in the middle. And I can't wait to see what model this is attached to. It'll probably add to, their, to, to the chaos space marines weird pantheon of living dinosaur robots, which I don't know if that's what origi the original minds behind Chaos envisioned for the faction, but that's what they have. And I, wanna, and I wanna talk a little bit about what Chaos is, maybe what they need, and uh, how they're they're lacking a little bit right now. Because uh, I've, I've, I have some friends of mine who play Chaos, and it does seem like the faction is in a little bit of a rough spot. And I think a lot of it has to do with the uniqueness of Chaos, unfortunately, because Space Marines. Oh my goodness, did Games Workshop ever come out with like, they created the perfect golden goose in the Space Marines because all Space Marines are identical. They're just different colors. Really, that is all they are. And people love their different colors. I love my color of Space Marines. It is super cool. And everybody can buy all the same kits and just do tiny minor modifications and all of a sudden, 
those are ultramarines, those are space wolves, those are lamenters, those are salamanders. You get so much bang for your buck with the generic range of space marines, and I feel like that is not how Chaos Space Marines work. It sort of is, a lot of Chaos Space Marines can fit inside of the Black Legion aesthetic, which basically the entire Chaos Space Marine line is held to, but uh, a, lot of, a, lot of space, a lot of Chaos Space Marine chapters are different. Some chapters don't really even follow Chaos. A lot of them are Renegades or Heretic Astartes. Uh, a lot of them, I guess you could build those with regular Space Marine kits and just do little things to alter them into Chaos. But I read the Night Lords books, and the Night Lords books seems like the Night Lords, they don't worship Chaos. They don't worship the Chaos Gods, really. They still make use of Chaos, but in the books, it sounds like they don't have space space dinosaurs and dragons flying around. They have regular old Space Marine equipment that they literally steal and then spray paint blue for battles. And is are they really being well represented by the current line of Chaos Kits? Yes and no. I don't know what to do. I, I just, you can't have three flavors of an entire range of Chaos Space Marines. Like you have the slightly renegade, and then the slightly more heretical, and then full on everything is spikes. Because be all of a sudden then you just got this giant bloated model range that would be awesome, but it's probably never in a million years gonna happen. And so it's tricky, you know, Space Marines, you, you paint a rhino, you can paint a rhino 100 different colors and it represents 100 different things. But with Chaos, I feel like a Mauler Fiend doesn't really represent the Night Lords very well. Uh, I just, I don't know. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel right to me. And so if I had to wager a guess at what will happen, I think that they saw incredible success with Nurgle and Zinch, creating a whole new range with those. And they look lovely and they're super cool. If you're Nurgle, if you're a, a Nurgle Chaos Space Marine, you are taken care of. You've got your weird slug-shaped tanks, you've got your bloaty, spoopy, sloppity biopiper drones. You got all of your squishy dudes. They look super cool and they're flavorful and they're thematic. And then if you play Zinch, you get uh, you get your cool rubric marines. You have a real Egyptian vibe going on. You're really neck and neck with Necrons on who can be more Egyptian. And you have a lovely range. And if you're Corn or Slanesh, you just have to make do with the regular Black Legion kits. I bet I would bet my bottom dollar that one day Korn and Slanesh will see the same treatments that Nurgle and Zinch got. You're gonna see their own unique range with their own unique design aesthetic. And then you'll have five Chaos, Chaos Space Marines aesthetics. And so then you will have everything you need to make your Chaos Space Marines really feel like your own. You know, maybe the Slanesh kits feel a little bit more Night Lordsy to me than the regular Black Legion kits. Or maybe the corn kits are gonna feel a lot more world eaters than the current uh, Black Legion range. I think we're gonna see, yeah, we're gonna see five factions of chaos. We're gonna see Slanesh, Corn, Zinch, Nurgle, and Undivided. And I think then chaos will be complete. Because as chaos exists now, it's a little bit awkward. But uh, yeah, something. Something is getting a very spooky chaos claw with a flamethrower in the middle, and I'm very excited to see what it is. It seems like it'll be something very new and very cool. But that is what I worked on this week, and now the show is called Models and Memories, and that is because of the memories associated with models. And this week, I would like to talk about... Death Watch Overkill. I think Death Watch Overkill was the last big purchase I ever made in my wargaming career before I went off to college. When this box was coming out, it was a really exciting time to be a wargamer because Games Workshop had just come out with a brand new faction. But Jay, they're not a brand new faction. They were in second, it's shush. It was a brand new faction. We hadn't had Gene Steeler Cults in decades. And now we're getting the brand new Gene Steeler Cult faction. And I was super pumped. I bought this and I remember the, my fondest memory of this box was uh, my cousin owned a game store at the time. He doesn't have it anymore, but at the time he had it. And I drove for like four hours to DeKalb, Illinois to pick up this box from him. And it was super cool. I never even looked at the supposed game that is within this box. I don't think anyone ever really did. But uh, it came with some Death Watch and 
like the entire range of Jane Steelers. It was, this box is a lot like the Sisters of Battle Army box where it came with a little tasting of everything. And that is, yeah, that is exactly what came in this box. This box came with four Jane Steeler called Aberrants. And so that was actually the minimum squad uh, for I think most of seventh edition was you could bring four because most people only had four. I had a lot because I bought this box and then I went on eBay and I basically bought this box two more times because I wanted a proper Gene Steeler cult army. And, uh, and it was super, super cool. And I remember those models were better than anything I had worked on before. I had put together some Necrons, I put together Space Marines, I put together Orcs. And those, those models were all very cool, but they were old. These models were new and they were super incredibly detailed. And some of the models that I, that I painted way back in the day uh, that came in this box are bad. I think Games Workshop, they do and don't over design their minis. I think having minis dripping with decorations is actually a good thing because it makes them more interesting, but you have to, you have to be realistic with painting them. If you paint them to look like the box, you are going to have a miserable time because the the heavy metal painters at Games Workshop are not painting things to look good on the tabletop. They're painting things to look really, really good in that 360 website photo. And that is a very different thing to what most of us are doing. I think if you if you highlight every single pocket and pouch and lens, it doesn't really add anything. But if you just kind of dry brush, the whole part of the model that has pouches and pockets and lenses, it'll you'll get the gist of it and it'll look really, really cool. Because flat surfaces are awesome for people who love freehanding and stencils and stuff, but big open flat areas are not good for new painters who have to fill that. I mean, I think we've all seen big, big capes covered in contrast paints that are just blotchy and weird and not good. But, uh, but Gene Sailor Cut was my first experience with real, intricate, detailed, hard to paint minis. And I painted a lot of them and I didn't do a great job with any of it. But I think Gene Sailor Cult was one of the big things that helped progress me in my painting journey uh, to get good, to hashtag get good. Because uh, th these were a challenge to paint compared to my Space Marines. Way a challenge compared to my Necrons. I mean, spray paint them white, literally dip them and wash and they're done. These, not so much. You can't get away with that. And I think painting these over and over and over and trying to get them to look good is really what helped give me new experiences with painting and trying out new things to get better at painting. But I was super pumped for this box. I think I had delusions that I would one day play the the game that this box is supposed to be. I actually bought little like jewelry case corners that I've riveted to the sides of my box to keep the box really, really nice. Uh, it'll never happen. I don't think I, I don't think. Yeah, the stuff isn't even in there. <laughs> it's gone. I probably threw it away, but uh, it is, it is, it is a very attractive box. I mean, Games Workshop, I don't, I don't like Games Workshop box art. I think they usually do a bad job, but on these sorts of releases, these boutique products, these one and done boxes, they usually really do a nice job. Look at that painting. I mean, holy moly, that is amazing. That is grim dark. it's spooky, it's science fiction. It is so unbelievably cool. I don't know if, if, uh, if anyone can uh, can withstand the allure of this gene stealer cult box art and i know so many people went the gene stealer cult route because they went all in then tried to paint them and went all out and then i bought their lots on ebay <laughs> but uh the gene stealer cult are one of my favorite factions in 40k i have them and so i'm a little bit biased but i really really like the gene stealer cult i think this box is really really cool and I always poo-poo the idea of Games Workshop adding new factions to the game because I think there's already too many factions as is, and I think they should really work to manage what they have. I mean, Eldar haven't seen a meaningful update in like 20 years. The Space Marines honestly could use a culling of units to get rid of some of the fluff and the, uh, there's just too much. Uh, Orcs have you recently, recently gotten some love, Necrons have recently gotten some love, but uh, it would be kind of cool to see a new faction, or at least maybe turn a faction into something new. 
Like maybe Tau. Tau supposedly have many, many alien factions within them, kind of like the Covenant from Halo. It'd be cool to actually see a lot more of that brought in. I mean, right now they have Prut, which is kind of a thing, and Vespid, which are not kind of a thing. But it would be cool maybe to see the Tau get a little something special, something new, something that feels like it's progressing the world of 40k, or at least filling out the universe. I mean, 40k is a galaxy-spanning universe with like seven factions. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel maybe as special as it could. But uh, real Games Workshop, work on the factions you have before you get new ones. You can't have dessert unless you finish all your dinner. But I love Death Watch Overkill. It is a very cool box with some very cool box art and it had so many lovely, lovely miniatures in it. It really did have a whole Gene Slither Cult army, which was sweet. But that brings this episode of Models Memories to a close. Now it's time for the real start of the show, this week's EOB Complete Submissions. We put out a challenge to our community to send us before and after photos of their recently finished models to be immortalized in our videos. If you want to join in the fun, you can submit a before and after photo of your painted mini to our Discord server, which you can find in the description below, or you can post it to Instagram with the hashtag EOBcomplete. Without further ado, let's look at and get inspired by what the folks have finished this week. A Gene Stealer Cult Acolyte by War Crime Milf, a Razorback Tank by Guy Man Hype, an Orc Stompa by Duplicorn, some 6mm Land Schneckets by Xenubi Q, some Stormcast Eternals by Lord Gordon, a Skitari by Boba Fett IG88, a Death Core of Krieg by Calamity, a Cataphract Determinator by Bastion, a Chaos Lord of Contagion by Emp, some Slanesh HQs by Errorgo, a Custom Orc Weird Boy by Bone Skull, an Obi-Wan in Clone Armor by Spiffy Muscle 07, a Custom Foul Blight Spawn by Dan Norris, a Contemptor Dreadnought by NL Senpai, some Necron Scorpec Destroyers by Aaron Bill 3, a Classic Grot by Just Make Stuff, a Logan Grimnar by Cubicle Lemming 9, a Custom Orc Squigoth by Josh 5600, a Captain on Jet Bike by Rio the Great, a Fancy Lion by Witness My Minis, some Gene Stealer Cult Heroes by Lost251, a Space Marine Captain by Casey on the Beat, some Plague Marines by Duty314, a Primaris Assault Intercessor by Busboy in Hotel, a Coruscant Guard Clone Trooper by Prussian Blue, a Custom Contemptor Librarian Dreadnought by What a Kind, a Shovel Knight Primaris Space Marine by Big Green Space Marine, a Blood Angels Terminator by Loyalist Frog, and a Mortis Engine by Fax Painter. Congratulations to everyone for a job well done. It's no small feat to get paint on minis and you all should feel really proud. Nothing gets the hobby juice its own like finishing a project and we all thank you for sharing your work, motivating us and the hobby community to paint our plastic. Thanks for sharing.